In the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, that is a girl, that's the goal of true education. Good afternoon, ladies and gent gentlemen. It's amazing to have all of you here at Montgomery Bell Academy, a school that stands firmly by these words. I would like to say thank you to Mr. Farrell and the entire admissions office for choosing me to speak here. My name is Siddhant Dike, and I'm a seventh grader here at MBA. I attended Page Middle before coming to this institution. A little, a little about myself. I'm part of the school's cardinal band where I play the French horn. I also enjoy playing the guitar casually. In the first quarter, I got a chance to be on the junior school golf team. Presently, I'm part of the swim team. When I first came to MBA, I was excited to see all the opportunities that I had. There were over 60 clubs that I could take part in. I decided to join the culinary club and the photography club. During the first month or so of school, all the seventh graders took an overnight trip to Camp Laney. Through our three days at camp, we learned how to work as a team. During these days, we were involved in many activities that challenged our bravery and team spirit. One such notable event was when my cabin and I built a makeshift box that couldn't really be called a boat. Let's just say we didn't get very far across the creek. Nevertheless, working with my cabin on this project was an experience I will never forget. The emphasis on academics at MBA can be seen profoundly through the structured curriculum that the school has to offer. Coming into MBA has challenged me academically at a whole new level. I've surprised myself in reaching goals that I never thought I was capable of. And I would like to credit this to the dedication and commitment of my teachers, who go the extra mile in working with me before and during school in the form of help sessions. I'm grateful to them and the resources that the school has offered me. We have done multiple service projects to support the people around us and to help our community. Recently, we had a community day during which 7th and 12th graders went along to Elmington Park to plant trees. Another group, another group went to help out at the Children's Hospital. You can really see the effort MBA invests in helping and giving back to the community to make a difference. I hope you all have a great rest of your visit to MBA. Lastly, nothing succeeds like success, and my school provides that framework and carves that path for me and my fellow students. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am Ian Dorelli, a senior at MBA, and I am honored that Mr. Joya asked me to speak to you today about my experience here. Not only is October 31st both Halloween and this wonderful admissions preview day, but also it is the last day to submit our college applications before the early deadline. Because of this coincidence, I have been having many discussions with peers from other schools about the activity section on the common application, the test scores, and essays that we've had to write. And I can confirm that MBA truly is a college preparatory institution. MBA's commitment to forming boys into well-rounded gentlemen with passions both inside and outside of the classroom prepares us remarkably well for the college journey and the application process. But in many ways, MBA does not just prepare us for college, it prepares us for life. Recently, I had the opportunity to talk to an MBA board member and member of the MBA class of 1969 over a cup of coffee about my service fellowship, an independent research project in which I have delved into the challenges of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities face on a regular basis. Because Mr. Banker runs a home and school for people with disabilities, he kindly invited me to his campus and talked to me about the importance of a community like his Stewart home and school. Beyond Mr. Banker's passion for service to others and willingness to help me on my service fellowship, what stood out to me the most about my meeting with with Mr. Banker was how he talked about MBA. He told me that his greatest friends to this day are the, boy, are the men he met at MBA. And I pray that someday I will say the same because the boys I've met and become friends with on, during my time on the Hill are some of the most incredible people I've ever met in my life. It is a privilege to share this campus with 825 like-minded individuals whom I am proud to call my brothers. But beyond the friendships I have formed through clubs like the Junior Classical League, the Garden Club, or through sports such as crew, swimming, football, and basketball, I have cherished the bonds I have created with my teachers and coaches, whose passion for education and commitment to the MBA community is unparalleled. I can't imagine any better example of the saying, practice what you teach, than the teachers and coaches at MBA. Every one of them reflects the values that MBA tries to instill into the students. One of the most influential teachers I have had is my AP Spanish teacher, Senor Paliki. Ironically, Spanish is my least favorite class, but please do not tell him. For some reason, languages have just not come naturally to me in the way math and sciences have. I have found myself upset with my grades in the class despite putting in much more work in this than the other classes. 
Just the other day, after a quiz, Senior Paliki gave us that lecture about how we should not care about what the grade is, but rather think about what it reflects and what it means. Whenever he says something like this, I know that I'm not going to like the grade. I got it back and I was right. I did not. That being said, Senor Paliki has taught me a vital lesson. Poco a poco se va lejos. Little by little, you go far. My education in the Spanish language has proved exactly that. I vividly remember sitting in my Spanish one class on the first day when the teacher spoke seemingly rapid fire Spanish with no English in our immersion style class. While the other students desperately tried to catch on to the cognates that sounded similar to English words and maybe pieced together what the teacher was saying, I sat there looking at a poster I did not understand and thought, I have to drop this class. I sat there, but then I decided I will stay with Spanish. I don't know why I did, but I did. I struggled through and little by little, I went far. I became a member of the National Spanish Honor Society, placed above the 95th percentile on three national Spanish exams, spent a month during the summer in an immersive language camp in Minnesota, and even received a Wilson grant to study abroad in Salamanca, Spain. But more important than any of these opportunities, I discovered the value of learning the language. Twice a week, with Senor Paliki and a group of other Spanish students, I tutor English to Spanish-speaking immigrants through our school's English as a Second Language program. While sometimes it is difficult to balance this program with other sports and homework, Senor Paliki's ability to attend every class encouraged me to continue helping these immigrants. I believe that at other schools, students feel that they do more than their teachers, but at MBA, it's simply not the case. Senor Paliki works nonstop during the day, coaches after school, and still attends these tutoring sessions along with many other service projects with the service club. There's no better example of the idiom poco a poco se va lejos than Senor Paliki, and I could not have asked for a better teacher. Another great role model of mine at MBA has been Ms. Hollyfield, our school's head art teacher. I can assure you art is not one of my fortes, and unlike Spanish, no matter how hard I practiced, I promise I would never improve. For this reason, I've never taken a single art class here. Yet Ms. Hollyfield's compassion and her dedication to her school's Best Buddies program, of which she is the faculty sponsor, led to my involvement with this organization. Chris Smith is a 34-year-old man with intellectual disabilities whom I am blessed to call one of my best friends. I met Chris at my first Best Buddies prom on a bus that Ms. Hollyfield drove. She introduced us and on that day we established a friendship that has flourished over the years and I know will continue through my life. Chris and I have gone to national shores, played paintball and video games, gone to dinners and lunches, and played guitar in the rock band at every home and football and basketball game. Chris is by far my most loyal friend. He never fails to ask me on our nightly calls how my day was, how my parents are, or how crew is going. In fact, when I told him about this speech, he eagerly asked if I could talk about him. <laughs> I know that I would never have this friend if it wasn't for Miss Hollyfield, who taught me the importance of inclusion and the value of compassion. Through her guidance and encouragement, I became increasingly involved with Best Buddies and was named a state ambassador and chapter president. Her impact on our Best Buddies chapter has led to its being named the top international promoter chapter and has inspired me to never limit myself in my leadership. In a similar way that my teachers in, class, in the classroom and faculty sponsors of clubs have prepared me for life beyond high school and college, my experiences as a rower has, has also prepared me for anything life could possibly throw at me. When I look back on the past five years as a member of the varsity crew team, I cannot help but wonder why I stuck with a sport as grueling and monotonous, monotonous as pulling with all my might on a carbon fiber oar. I guess the person I have to blame for keeping with the sport of blisters, sunburns, and throwing up into rivers is none other than our coach and AP physics teacher, Coach Kesser. Coach Kesser has taught us that success is not measured by the number of medals hanging from our necks, but rather by our ability to claim victories over our personal goals. It is because of Coach Kesser that our team has grown from 13 rowers to over 120 boys in high school and junior school. It is because of Coach Kesser that last year my boat placed third in the nation. And it is because of Coach Kesser that our large team has such a tight bond on and off the river. I do not know anybody who better embodies the aspects of gentleman, scholar, and athlete better than Coach Kesser. A few years from now, I doubt I will ever hold an oar in my hand again, travel to Canada on a bus with the crew team, or experience the satisfaction of finishing a race knowing I put 100% of my effort every stroke with seven other boys in the same boat doing the same thing. But I do know that I will never forget the numerous lessons Coach Kesser has taught me on the values of leadership, dedication, and commitment. To finish up today, I would like to say thank you for coming to visit our campus, and I hope you enjoy the tours. This is a very special place and an incredible community that I can honestly say is my greatest blessing. To return to what I said earlier, the school is far more than a college preparatory school. It is a life-preparing community in which boys are guided by incredible teachers to become gentlemen, scholars, and athletes. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, this room, uh, this great new building that we opened last January. Uh, we have, uh, our, of course, many of our students here today, uh, may, almost all of our faculty and staff, a number of our parents, and you'll meet people like uh, Randy, our security guard, who's up there on, on the right, uh, and probably Susan and Avi, who work in our dining hall. And I, it's important for me to highlight that people like them know our students intimately as well. And this is a very close-knit community that uh, I hope you'll get a, a great glimpse of today. So welcome to this school and to our community. I'm Brad Joya, an English teacher and the headmaster at MBA. I am pleased to talk to you about a place I have loved and cherished these past 28 years. Before 1994, I had never spent any time at a boys' school. In fact, I asked almost no questions about what a boys' school is like when I interviewed at MBA. I knew that MBA was a very good school and had the potential to be an even greater school. I have come to believe that schools are defined not by whether they are boys or girls' schools, co-ed or private or public schools. It is the culture of a school and its community that determines its strength and goodness, and MBA's culture is what excites me most about our community. A glimpse of that culture happens each and every week. I witness the depth and breadth and goodness of our school at assemblies. On the campus in the mornings when I greet students arriving before 7 a.m. In the hallways where I see their friendship and care for one another. In the classrooms when I see their focus, curiosity, and love of learning. I relish watching the ways our students support one another in all endeavors and I appreciate the lack of boundaries between sports and the arts, debate and robotics, math and chess and science competitions, English and science. All fields of endeavor are embraced at MBA. And our students understand how critical it is to embrace a friend or a classmate regardless of his interest or activity. At MBA, it does not matter if you do robotics, debate, theater, mock trial, lacrosse, music, or football. Everything is important. We support everyone and every activity. Let me digress from my comments to give you an illustration of that. With those students that are seated in front and behind me who are involved in golf, please stand and remain standing. With those involved in crew, please stand and remain standing. In cross country, in football, in rifle, in hockey, in wrestling, in basketball, in swimming and diving, in bowling, in ultimate frisbee, in track, in baseball, soccer, tennis, and lacrosse. Thank you, please be seated. At MBA, it is not important what your last name, your zip code, or previous school is. It matters whether you work hard or are committed to our ideals. Students and faculty embrace you whatever your passion is. As a recent graduate stated, whether you wake up in Belle Mead or Bellevue, Brentwood or Bordeaux, Hendersonville or Antioch, you can be successful at MBA if you work hard and embrace the values of the school and its community. We have 50 acres on this campus at Harding Road, 10 acres of playing fields in Sylvan Park, and just over 200 acres on a mountaintop near McMinnville. There are 825 students at MBA and 160 employees. We look for teachers who care about their subject, 
are passionate about sharing that knowledge and expertise with young people and willing to express their care and dedication to young men. Most of all, we have built a community where people care about and know one another and enjoy working together. In many respects, this is an exciting time at MBA. We have developed the campus at Harding Road with a new athletic complex that has transformed our community and opportunities, as well as built some wonderful facilities at our Long Mountain property. We are committed to offering students and families amazing opportunities. Almost $1 million is allocated annually for grants for our students to explore academic interests. And we send students on exchange programs to almost every continent in the world. We believe in developing young men, and our decisions are based on what is best for the boys at this school. We have the unique opportunity to focus on young men at a time when boys need attention, strong mentorship, and healthy structure and expectations. I mentioned learning about boys in boys' schools over 25 years ago. What I have discovered is that we have a tremendous opportunity to educate young men in an age where men and masculinity have been challenged. I am convinced that we can offer young men an understanding of who they are and how important issues like compassion, empathy, kindness, and developing one's inner core are. In a boys' school, young men are more prone to express themselves, to be open to each other, and to understand that they should respect others, particularly women and find the right ways to become better people and citizens. At, our, at MBA, our boys must be in the chorus, the theater, on the debate and mock trial team, and spearhead our service programs. What I appreciate most about the school is that it is cool to study, and it is understood that doing service, helping others, and competing in a sport like crew, boys like Ian, are essential to finding the better man inside of you. It is also clear to me that we have created a culture at MBA where the boys understand that there is something at stake in our school and community that is larger than they are. Being a part of a genuine community of young men who understand the priorities of gentleman, scholar, athlete, who accept that they are here to work hard and to learn principles and values that will make them better people. We believe in common courtesy, in old world values that embrace the virtues of caring for one another, in saying please and thank you, respecting effort and hard work regardless of your activity and ensuring that we earn our reputation and standing. I admire this community of young men and faculty at MBA because they appreciate the joy of our music programs, the intelligence of a speaker who recognizes that there is nothing as strong as the gentleness of the human spirit or as gentle as the strength of a real man. I appreciate the balance at MBA, and we need and want the best young men in Nashville and their families to join us in this enterprise. I thank you for being here this afternoon and hope it is a great day for you. Join me now in welcoming our jazz band and chorus.